everybody. My name is Wes, and today we are going to be talking about worship and scheduling. I'm excited about this one. I'm a worship leader by trade, uh, so for me, this is just really in my lane, so can't wait to go through all the things. Uh, now, if this is your first time attending one of our live streams, uh, these live streams are live, unless you're watching at a later time, then you won't be able to interact with us. But we've got this chat here uh, in the Vimeo live stream. I encourage you, jump in that chat, say hey. Let us know uh, what your role is. So that way, I kind of know where you're coming from. If you're a worship leader, if you're a pastor, if you are on the admin team at your church. Uh, but this is, we're going to be diving into all the things worship and scheduling related here in Church Track. Now, if you're wanting to learn about other features in the software, I encourage you uh, to first check out our YouTube channel. Uh, that is such a great place to learn uh, the software through and through. We have a video for almost everything you can imagine there. Uh, and then if you are the kind of person who likes to talk to other people who are using the software you're using, we have a great Facebook group that I would encourage you to check out as well. Uh, that Facebook group, I love seeing all the great conversations happening in there and people just helping each other with their ministries, even beyond Church Track. So if you're on Facebook, I encourage you to check out that Facebook users, uh, Church Track users group on Facebook. Uh, and then lastly, when it comes to getting help with something in Church Track, I encourage you just click that help button on the top right. Uh, when you click that help button, it gives you the ability to either create a support ticket or just show all help topics and actually view our online user guide. And we have packed this user guide with so much great information. We, and we're talking about worship and scheduling today, but we've got all the things here, worship and scheduling in there you can check out. Um, so that's definitely uh, the way to get help uh, in terms of learning the software. And from here, you can also schedule a phone call or create a support ticket too. So we're big on that. All right. Now, these live streams, I really like to make these sort of a classroom kind of setting, uh, but not like a boring classroom where you're sitting there wanting to fall asleep. No, I want you to be interactive with me. Now, I will set aside a lot of time at the end. So I see Catherine, Megan, Chad, um, Shana, Tim. Uh, we will have a time of Q&A at the very end uh, where I'll just answer all your questions and I'm prepared to stay as long as it takes. Uh, think of me as like the pastor after church, except I'm not in a hurry to go to the all-you-can-eat restaurant and get chicken. I can wait. Um, so just kind of get that out of the way. Um, if there is something that comes up and you need my direct attention, just let me know in the chat uh, and I'll be sure to try to reply to that. Uh, but let's go ahead. Let's get started. Let's talk about worship and scheduling, shall we? Uh, so I want to cover, this is covering a lot because we're basically covering the worship and scheduling screen in its entirety. So we're covering a whole lot of information here today. I wanna to encourage you, like if you feel like, man, there's a few things I missed or something, go back, watch videos. We have videos for pretty much every feature in here. Uh, but let's give a good overview so you can kind of get familiar with all the stuff. So we're gonna be talking about the initial worship and scheduling setup. Then we're gonna dive into the song library. Uh, we're gonna look at teams and roles. Uh, then we're going to look at the services and scheduling, and then ultimately we're going to end things with side by side. One of the coolest features since sliced bread. Uh, I, I may be exaggerating a little bit because sliced bread is pretty amazing, but side by side has made my life a lot easier as a worship leader. Okay, well, let's dive into it. Let's do this. So when you log into Church Track, worship and scheduling, that is right there, worship and scheduling screen. It is worth noting that this is a Church Track Plus feature. If you don't have Church Track Plus, you won't have access to this. Uh, you'll need to upgrade your account. Uh, so when you click that, you're brought to the services and scheduling tab by default. But I want to talk about setting things up and everything. And we kind of start from right to left in this. I know it sounds a little strange, but if you're using this for the first time and everything, you want to start with the setup and work your way to the left. So we go to setup. And there's a few things. So initially, we have uh, some options here in our settings and preferences where we can pick the song screen columns, and it's just one or two, depending on what you like. And you'll see that in a second when we show the song library. Uh, your default start time and end time for your services, your default rehearsal start time and end time. And then this is a really big one, our song select integration. So right now, I've already got my song select account linked to my church track account. And so we actually have an integration with song select. Uh, so if you are using song select, 
uh, go ahead and link that to Church Tracks so that way you can take advantage of being able to pull from Song Select's library and it makes your life a lot easier, uh, not only with just putting your music and everything in a Church Track, but also when it comes to just doing reporting, stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of the settings and preferences. Now service elements, this is another part of the software in which you are building out your worship service outlines and you have things beyond just songs. And so you have things like announcements, arrival, baptism, closing, all the things. Uh, we provide you with quite a few by default, uh, but you can add your own. Just click create a new element. Um, under locations, this actually pulls from uh, the calendar in Church Track already whenever you're creating different locations, but you can add additional ones as well. Um, my worship building, I've already got here by default, but you can add whatever location it is. So if you have different areas in which you have your worship service, uh, you can go from there. So that's that. And then as you create templates, uh, those templates are going to show up here. I actually have my one template here that I've already retired because I've got another template that I've been using lately. And so your templates are going to show up here and you can actually rename them or delete them here. And templates are definitely a huge thing um, because <laughs> it saves you a lot of time. Uh, if you are not using templates in this uh, software, uh, you are definitely not leveraging it the best you can. So I'm going to stress templates a little later. All right, so that's kind of the initial setup. I'm, I flew through that. If you didn't get it all, go back, look at the user guide. We walked through some of that. Uh, let's talk about the song library. Uh, so if you're a worship leader or someone who's wanting to add all the music and everything and, and be able to plan all these things, the song library is a big thing. And we have so many great features in here and adding your music and keeping track of all of it. And so the first step is you want to add your songs. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Uh, so question, I'll ask everybody in the chat, have you already started adding your songs into uh, church track? So have have you maybe utilized our song select integration to add them? Have you been adding them in manually? Have you been adding some of the popular ones? Let me know in the chat. Uh, but there are a couple ways to add your songs. First way is just simply adding a song from scratch, not importing from song select, but just adding it. And so to do that, I click add song, and then I select add a new song, and then I can go ahead and start adding the song that I want to add. Now, in this particular situation, I tell you what, I want to add the song Battle Belongs. So Battle Belongs. And I'll pick my key that I want to put the song in. So I'll say, how about the key of A? And I can pick a tempo if I want. Uh, I'm going to say medium. I can put a song tag. I can start uploading files right from here if I want, which I think I actually will do right now. I've got a chord chart that I want to put in there. So I'll drag and drop that chord chart right in there. So I've got my chord chart already attached to it. Um, and then from here, I can even take things to another level. I can add lyrics, I can add chords. And what's nice about adding them in this format is I can actually leverage the transposition tool that's built into Church Track. And so if I just go ahead, I'm just copying and pasting chords in here real fast just to show you that. And so there we go, got that added. Now you can add other things too as well. So I can put in like the length in seconds of how, how long the song is. So if I wanted to just go ahead and put that in there, a CCLI number, uh, copyright information, any of that stuff, I can do that. Okay, so I'll click add song. And now I've got it added into the database. So now when I search battle, there it is. I've added the song, got it added in there. Um, and you can see I have got that song's file and everything. I've got the lyrics and chords. And there's that transpose and print thing that I was telling you about, where I can actually transpose songs right on the fly with the software doing all the hard work for me and transpose the G if I want. Um, so that's adding a song in manually. Now, if you are utilizing song select, I would highly recommend that just because it is so much faster. Plus you get all the uh, information that song select provides with like uh, different tags, the CCLI number, it automatically imports all that in. And so I'm gonna add a song here real fast and I'm gonna import from song select. And now I am going to add a song and let's say I wanna add in the song only King forever. So I search it, system goes through, finds all the songs. And it's always funny with worship music. Uh, in many cases, there are songs that have similar titles. And so one thing I really appreciate is whenever I see a song, I can go ahead and say, okay, I click the song 
And then I look and say, I don't know if, if Stephen Furyk was the one that made that. Let me double check the lyrics. Um, oh, yes, that is the song I want to add. So then I can click add to song to my library and I can include the lyrics. I can include the chord sheet. I can say what key I want it in. Um, so in my case here, let's say, you know what? I just want the default key that it comes in and then I will click add song. And there we go. I've added the song. And so now when I search that song, it's going to pop up. So really handy being able to do that. And so only King Forever just to show you. So I've got that song, it's pulled up here. Um, but you can also take things to the next level. You can add files and things. So that's how you add songs either manually or using through Song Select. Um, and Catherine, I do, I, I do wish that there was a way to import from Planning Center. Unfortunately, uh, they just don't provide a way to really easily export it. You, you can export the list of your songs at least. Uh, reach out to our support team because we've, we've helped a lot of churches make that migration. And so just reach out to them. They'll help you with that. Uh, so, all right, I've added songs that way. Now, just a couple things worth noting here. After you add songs in the church track, uh, I can click a song and I can edit it right here from the fly. If I wanted to add additional files, um, maybe I wanted to add a link here. I could link a YouTube video to that, which I'm really big on just linking YouTube videos, not only of the song itself, but I link a lot of videos for like electric guitarists um, because there's just so many videos out there now for free that I can give to my vocalist or bass player or guitarist that really pinpoint those things. And so I can actually add those links in there as well so my people can see them, which is super handy. Um, so that's kind of the quick version of how you edit the songs here. Now it's going beyond like editing songs. So we provide a lot of ways to search your, your music because as time goes on, I'm sure many of you have pretty big song libraries. Uh, let me know how many, how many songs that you are pulling from right now, like in your song libraries right now that you're planning on adding into church track. Um, how many songs you have. Uh, I've worked with a lot of ministries, um, anywhere from 50 songs to one uh, minister I was working with said they had 300. And I was like, wow, that's a lot. Um, which, you know, depending on how long you're a worship leader or just how often you're adding fresh material, maybe you're utilizing a lot of Christmas music for certain times of the year and music for Easter, uh, maybe hymnals, things like that, um, then you're going to have a lot of songs. And so being able to search your library is super important for that. And so I can search my library and I can say, hey, I want to find a song that talks about grace. And so I can search grace and there we go. Here's all the songs that talk about grace. Graves in the Gardens, love it. Um, or let's say, you know what? I need to find a song that's in a particular key because, oh, you have close to 600 songs. That is a new record. That's awesome. Um, I, it, let me know how many of those, are, are you doing all 600 a year? If you are, I'm thoroughly impressed. Uh, so another thing too, I can search by keys. So I'll say key of D and there we go. I've got my songs in the key of D. Maybe I need to see songs in the key of C because I'm just trying to make a good transition between these two songs I have here that I want to do. I can do that. Um, or I can say, you know what? I want to look at all my starred songs. I've got some songs I starred not too long ago, or I can take things to the next level and I can actually create collections. And this is a feature I think many of you are going to really appreciate um, because there are a lot of songs we only do certain times a year. Christmas is a prime example. And so you could click this add a collection button here, and then you can just name that collection whatever you want. And I'm just gonna name this one for fun. I'm just gonna say Wes's, Wes's favorite music, just because, and I'll click okay. All right, and then from here, I can actually start adding songs into this collection. And so I just click edit and then I can start adding all the songs. And here's what's really neat. I appreciate this is I can just select each song I wanna add. So in theory, I mean, I can build out this, uh, this collection in like 60 seconds if I wanted to, it's kinda of wild. And so I'll just hit close, so you, you get the gist. You can create these collections, you can add them in very quickly um, and it just makes life easier. So that way, whenever it does come Christmas time, for example, I just select Christmas music and there's all my Christmas music. So that way I can get an idea of what I'm trying to pull from as I build out everything. Um, so that is kind of the long story short of using the song library. There are a lot of other little nuanced features within there um, that you can check out and see. Uh, one thing worth noting, uh, is the ability to be able to generate a report, a song usage report. 
and it's that little printer icon button to the top right. And if I click that, I can generate that report, whether I'm trying to report for CCLI, um, if it's that time of year and CCLI is asking for a report from you, or if I'm genuinely, I don't know, does anybody else have this struggle where sometimes you do certain songs a little bit too much and it takes like someone in your uh, congregation coming up to you and saying, hey, um, I've noticed you've done Waymaker about 14 times in the past three weeks. Uh, you might want to chill out on that. Um, do you have that problem? I, sometimes I have that problem. Uh, there's for a brief minute where my wife told me, honey, there are other songs besides Graves in the Gardens. You, you can do other songs. So uh, yeah, if you have that problem, this will help you. So you're welcome. Uh, so that is the song library. Let's jump into teams and roles. Now, if you are not really um, focused on the worship side of things, by the way, and you're not a worship leader, you're more so interested in the volunteer scheduling and everything, we are now getting into your territory. So thank you so much for staying patient with me here. Uh, because when it comes to planning out worship services and scheduling volunteers, I mean, we're, we're talking about so much more than just scheduling the band. Now, obviously, you know, that's a big part for a lot of ministries, but we're talking the welcome team, the children's ministry team. Uh, maybe you have a security team, a parking lot ministry, a hospitality team, whatever that team may be, you can go ahead and create those teams in church track, create those roles, schedule the people and all the things. So let's talk about how you can do that. And so this starts with first, you want to create a team uh, for whatever purpose you're trying to do here. And just to, for this example, I'm going to create a team and I'm going to call this hospitality team because I've already got like my band and everything. So hospitality team. And then I will click OK. All right. So once you create a team, now you have the ability, you can add a description if you want. I highly recommend this so, so I can say um, this team is in charge of all food related um, items for services. And then I'll just say coffee, bagels, whatever. I gotta spell bagels right. And blah, blah, blah. I could write other things. Um, the other thing too is you can create a team leader. I highly encourage this. Um, so that way you can designate a particular person in the software that's in charge of that team. And then another nice touch is you can allow that person in that team to see the worship outline or not. Um, so a team like the hospitality team is a really good example of a team that probably doesn't need to see the worship outline or anything. They just need to know, hey, when am I scheduled and what do you have me scheduled for? And so in this situation, I would just leave that unchecked. So it's really just up to you. Um, and in my children's ministry, they have access to that if I want them to have that. So you can really edit this on the fly as needed. Now that I've created my team, put it in some details, I can start assigning different roles to this team because right now I have no roles. Um, and fun fact, when you create these different teams, it's actually creating a tag on the people screen. And when you create roles, those roles are actually sub tags on the people screen. So this all actually intertwines with church track people. Um, so from here, I'll just start creating roles and I'm gonna say, I'll tell you what, first role is coffee, which is in my cup right now and I'm gonna have a sip. Mm. That is good. All right, so coffee. Uh, next role I'm going to create. How about, let's say, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of something fun here, but I can't on the fly. You put me on the spot, everybody. Um, we're just going to say setup. And there we go. And I could add additional roles. And then from here, what you're going to want to do is start adding those people into those roles. And so I can click that coffee, and then I can start searching people in my existing church track database. Um, Alan's asking, can you delete them? Absolutely, yeah, you can delete any team that you want to delete. Um, you'll have to delete that from the people screen just because it does create a tag, so just go to the people screen to delete that tag. But I'm gonna go ahead and put Jamie on my coffee team, and there we go, I've added Jamie. I could continue to add additional people if I want to do that. Um, and then I'll just say Matt Giles, he's going to be on my coffee team as well. And so you just keep doing this. You add these people to the team. Um, and one thing I really like is you can actually see how many people, as you start adding people, how many people are in each team um, or in each role, I should say. And so whenever I look at my worship team as a worship leader, I can quickly go to that team role. And this just helps you see the depth of your teams. 
um, and it helps you really quickly at a glance see, oh man, I've only got two drummers. Um, I need to maybe try to see if I can find additional people that play drums over the next few months so I can have additional drummers to give my guys some breaks and stuff. Um, so ushers, yeah, Alan, ushers is a great example of that. There, you can create any team in any type of role that you need for your ministry um, to be able to do this. Um, and then as you add those team members, by the way, so like back to my hospitality team, got my team roles. I go to the team members and there are all my team members right there. And I can actually click on a specific team member and I can add unavailable dates for them, which they can do on their own as well, which I'll show a little later. Um, but I can go to their member details and then I can put in, if I don't have a number for them yet, I can put in a phone number. Uh, I've got an email address already. I can select the invite method. Um, a lot of times I do both email and SMS just because I like to uh, be able to communicate people both ways. So I can say, oh, I'll just put in a random phone number here. And there we go. So I have their phone number. Uh, I can add notes on that person too. Uh, so that's kind of the, the quick version of being able to use the software to create different teams and create different roles uh, for everything. And like I said earlier, I mean, there is no limitation to how many teams you create, how many different roles you have. Um, I see churches that are just getting started that only have one team and just a handful of roles. And I see other churches that are much larger that have dozens of teams and dozens of roles. Uh, and the beauty of this is being able to assign all those different teams with different team leaders and everything. So that way, your different people that have church track um, user uh, privileges can go ahead and manage their teams in church track and everything. Um, so really great stuff there. Um, Andy's asking, can I add team members without creating roles? Um, yeah, you can add team members uh, without creating roles if you'd like to do that. So I've got a bunch of team members. Actually, I apologize. No, you cannot. So uh, you need to add them to a specific role. Um, now, one thing, Andy, I see a lot of ministries do is they'll actually just create like a generic role and then they'll just assign people and, and call that role like volunteer or something. That's pretty common. And then that way they can just add all their people in and then assign roles later on when needed. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, if you're trying to do something very specific, always reach out to our support team if you need help with that, uh, just because we're used to helping churches that are doing things very nuanced. Um, I was working with a church once that does like garage sales on a quarterly basis, and they were utilizing this to schedule all their people and stuff. And so we figured out a really neat solution for them that made their life so much easier because they had like 50 volunteers every time they did this and different roles in different areas, different times. And so there's a lot of neat stuff you can do with this in terms of creating those teams and scheduling the people, which we're going to talk about the scheduling and services and all that now. So let's talk about services and scheduling. Uh, so after you've taken the time, you've set up everything initially, like we talked about earlier, then you've gone through, you've added your songs to the song library. If you're utilizing this for worship planning, then you've created your teams and your roles. You're now ready to create your worship services and start planning things out and scheduling people. Uh, so let's talk about how we can do that. Um, so to create a service in church track, so I've already got a bunch of services here for both my children's ministry and main church, which I'll show off in a second. But I just want to show like from start to finish how you create a service, um, both with, with a template and without a template. So we're creating a service from scratch. So I click create service. And again, just to show that in case you're watching a smaller device, I'm going to zoom in so you can see that that create service button there at the bottom. I click create service and then I can enter a title for this service. Um, I'm just going to call this um, regular church service. And then I can pick my service date. And, you know, I'm just going to pick November 6th just because I don't have anything planned that day yet. And it already has that start time and end time that I created by default. Remember, you can change that in the settings. Uh, so if you're doing uh, changing your service times or something, that helps you out a lot. I can select the calendar I want that to be on. We also have a few optional fields just to let you know. Uh, you can create a service using a template, which we'll show in a minute. Uh, you pick the location you want this to be at. I'll say the annex, but it could be my worship center any memos, any service tags. So being able to actually organize your services with tags is a pretty cool feature. And then from here, I just click create service. All right, service is created and I'm done, let's go. No, we're not, <laughs> we have some things to do everybody. Uh, so when it comes to adding all the things, 
I click this Add Service Items button. And I think you're going to really appreciate how remarkably quick this is to build out a service from scratch. Now, like I said earlier, I think most of you are not going to be building out services or planning events from scratch. I think you're going to be utilizing templates. But anytime you do need to build things from scratch, it is so fast. It's, it's kind of, it's painfully fast, uh, if that's a thing. So I can select all the songs I want to add. So just for our sake here, I'm just going to add most random songs I see that come to my head. Um, Everything Glorious. Man, I didn't play that song forever. Um, how about Firm Foundation? Um, Goodness of God. That's a good song. All right. Got all the songs added. And now from here, I can add other items if I want. So most of you will probably have some sort of service elements you want to add. And what's neat is, I mean, you can create a service element for basically anything. So if your church uh, does a lot of things liturgical or if your church doesn't, whatever it is you're trying to incorporate in there, you can add it either via songs or via service elements. And so then I can say, hey, I need announcements. Um, I have a closing. Uh, we have a time of offering. We have a time of scripture. We have a time of sermon. We have a welcome. We have a video. And then I just add that real quick. And there we go. So then I have all these things added in here, um, and then I can start just moving things around to wherever they need to be. And so I can say, hey, we're going to do the welcome. I'm going to move this up right after the first song. And then I can from here say, you know what, let's do this song, Everything Glorious, first, and then we'll actually move this song after the welcome, and then we'll move the announcements down here. Uh, so quickly, quickly, you build out things. Um, and then as you're building this out, um, you can go into here and actually edit every single thing. And so I can assign a time to it. So if that song already didn't have a default time, I can actually add a time. So I can say, hey, this is actually five minutes long. And so I can do that five minutes long. I can say who it's led by, Wes. I can put a memo, light Q, number four, whatever I want to do there. And then from here, I can just continue that process if I would like to. Uh, so really handy being able to kind of build things out. And you can really get as detailed as you want in this, or you can keep it simple. It's really up to you. Uh, so that's how you create a service from scratch. Now, creating a service from a template, which I thoroughly recommend, that is done by creating the service again. And then from here, I'll go ahead and I'll title the service and I'll just call this regular church service. And then I can go ahead and pick a, a start date and we'll say this is happening. Oh, how about November 13th? And then I've got my time and everything. But then I can say, hey, create service using a template. And I'm going to show you how to create a template, but I just want to show you real fast. So then I'm going to say worship template A. That's the one we use. And then I can use the songs or I can use placeholders instead. Let's say placeholders just because I don't want to use the songs again. I can use the roles or I can use placeholders for those. So I can use the same people as last time. So if you're in a situation where you're often using the same people every week and maybe you have a couple different templates you want to create, one template with these people, another template with those people, that's the way to go. Um, I actually do that personally. A lot of children's ministries do that where they'll have like four different templates or two different templates because they do one on, one off every week. Um, so I can use those roles um, and I could pick the location. We'll say Annex and then go ahead, create service and I'm ready to go. So then I can just start adding the songs I want in here. And then when I go to scheduling and roles, I've got all the people in here already ready to rock and roll. Uh, and so again, this is beyond the worship team. I've got my AV team in here too, but you can also use this for children's ministry and stuff. Now, if you want to make a template out of a service, this is a big thing. So let's say, let's go to that service I created just a little earlier. I, I created this from scratch. Let's say this actually looked way better than it is now. And I want this to be my template to start using from here on out after I've added people and everything, then I can click on the, sorry, <laughs> click the edit button here and I'll zoom in. My mouse is so fast that sometimes I accidentally fly around here. And so you just click this edit button and then under use as a template, you select yes. And then it will automatically make that a template that you can utilize. Now I've shown you how to add like all the service items, uh, but I haven't talked about scheduling yet. So let's, let's go to the scheduling side of things. So 
From here, I click scheduling and roles. And this is where I can add my different people or the roles for the event that I want to start scheduling people for. Um, so I just click this add people slash roles button. Um, out of curiosity, let me know in the chat, what's, uh, what's the funniest uh, role that you've ever had at your church? Um, I know I worked with one church. He said they had a pan drum player, um, which I thought was really cool. And for a brief period, I wanted to buy a pan drum until I saw how much they cost. Uh, but yeah, what's, what's the most interesting role you've ever added? Uh, so I've got my worship team here. Uh, and I can start adding my people right from here if I'd like, or I can start adding the roles. And just to show you how fast I can build this out, I can pick my worship leader. All right, I want to pick my keys player. I want to pick my vocalist, maybe. I want to pick my drummer, got my drummer picked. And then I want to pick my bass player, my electric player. And there we go. And I can just keep doing this. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those names real fast, just so you, you get the gist of how you add those. Uh, crow's nest. Alan added a crow's nest as a role. That is a new one. I've not heard of that. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, okay, so we've added our people, we've got our roles and stuff. Uh, depending on your ministry, it may be you know maybe like this many people, or maybe this times 20. I don't know. I send out invites. So I click this send invites button and now I have the ability to send out invites for the people in specific teams. Um, so right now it's only showing the teams I lead. So if I wanted to see all the teams, I could show all teams to see those, but I can say, Hey, I want to send out my invites for the worship team, the AV team, and that's it. I'm not scheduling the children's ministry people. And then I can also, here's, here's something that's really cool is a reminder message. Uh, so, let me know in, in the chat. Um, I still can't get over crow's nest, Alan. Uh, let me know in the chat. Have, have you ever had it happen to you when you're, you're setting things up for your, maybe your children's ministry or maybe you're a worship leader, you're setting up the, the, uh, the building, um, getting everything ready, cranking up the sound system, 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, and you get a text message from, I don't know, maybe your person running the lyrics, and they say, hey, uh, I wasn't scheduled today, was I? And, of course, you think to yourself, they were, they were scheduled. And so then you reply back to them, uh, yeah, you were, are you gonna be here? And then of course, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm out of town. I, I didn't realize I was scheduled. I completely forgot. Um, it's not that we have bad volunteers. I'm, well, let me, sometimes we have bad volunteers, but that's a whole nother subject for another day. Um, no, it's just people forget, um, especially if we're scheduling people out maybe a month in advance, which for me, a lot of times I'm trying to schedule people out uh, five to eight weeks in advance and people forget when they're scheduled and they need reminded sometimes. Well, the last thing I have time to do as someone who is scheduling dozens of people every single week is to remember to hop on my cell phone and send them out a text message. Um, I, don't, I don't remember that kind of stuff, but thankfully the software does with these scheduling reminders. And so I can tell the system, I can say, hey, send out a reminder message to all these people. So not only are they getting scheduled, can you make it yes or no, blah, 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 but they can also have a reminder sent maybe one day, two day, three days before that particular event that they're scheduled for whether it is a Sunday morning worship service, whether it is a Wednesday night, Awanas, whatever it is you're scheduling your people for, they get that reminder that, hey, so-and-so, you are scheduled to serve for this specific role at this time. Um, and so that way, you're, you're not having that, that awkward text conversation at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, and then you're scrambling to try to find people. No, they get alerted ahead of time. And then you just click send invites, and you're done. The system takes care of all these things for you. Uh, so that's how you send out the scheduling invites and everything. And one thing I do want to show, like I want to show what this looks like for your people. So like when you're sending out scheduling invites to your people and everything, like what it looks like on their end too. Uh, because at the end of the day, if, if your people don't understand what's going on and stuff, um, it makes it a little hard. So it needs to be simple for your team to utilize as well. Um, so whenever you send out these scheduling invites, uh, your people are gonna be either sent a text message or an email, depending on what you've selected for them, like I showed a little earlier. 
And then whenever they click that link in the text message or they click that link in the email, it takes them straight to Church Connect. And Church Connect, uh, if you don't know, aren't familiar with Church Connect, it is a church app. It is a website. It's a member portal. It's all those things wrapped up in the one easy to use tool for your church people to be able to communicate with your church, know what's going on and everything. And so it's going to take them to those events that they are scheduled for, or in a case where you schedule them for one particular event, it's going to take them straight to that event, ask them, can they make it, yes or no. And then once they've either accepted or declined, they're going to have the ability to view the service outline if there is an outline. And so in my situation here as a church member, I've been scheduled to run audio next week. The following week, I've been scheduled to play bass guitar. And then the next week I was scheduled, but I had to decline that. Uh, that was to run audio, and so I hit decline, and so you can see that. But then maybe if something comes up, I say, you know what, I actually can make it. I can go back there, and I can say accept. And then I can maybe add a note and say, hey, I'm good now for this. I can make it now. So I can make it. And this is just so great because it helps you as a scheduler know what's going on through people. And then as someone who is wanting to see the outline, so I'm a person that's been scheduled. I want to view that worship outline. I can click that link to view the worship outline. And then there's the worship outline right there with all the songs in blue and then all the other elements to be able to see. And then I can click a particular song. So like House of the Lord. That's a fun song. There's joy in the house of the Lord. So I click that and uh, right here I have access to any links, anything I provided for my people. So I can click there to go straight to the core chart if I wanted to do that, which is really handy. Or I can view that YouTube video right there. Um, or I can view the lyrics and chords and start transposing stuff out if I wanted to do that. So here's the song and I can say, hey, you know what? Um, I am going to throw a capo in my guitar, or in this case, I'm playing bass, so I'm not rolling with a capo. Not, no bass players use capos. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I've seen some really good bass players use capos just because it makes life easy. But you can also transpose things right there on the fly, whether it's on a phone, an iPad, um, and your people, they can download this stuff with their phone and any kind of viewer you can imagine. They have a specific app they like to view everything on. We've really tried to make this kind of streamlined for your people and make it, instead of them having to depend on one specific app to view all the things, they can really just use whatever app they want, whether it's the built-in app that's with their device, whether it's an iOS device or an Android, or if it's something specific that they like to view their music and stuff in, they can go ahead and do that. Um, and then your people, you can also give them the ability to just download everything in one fell swoop. So if I have all of these PDFs, well, I can just download all the PDFs and I can select all the ones I want to download and then merge them all into one master PDF file. Uh, so yeah, I'm nerding out a little bit. If you're like Wes, you're getting kind of deep in there. Um, <laughs> there's just it's so many neat things that you can do with this when it comes to the, the worship side of things and scheduling out for your people um, and being able to provide them with that stuff. And then also print outline. So if your people do need to print out that outline, that's an option for them as well. One other thing I do want to make mention of. So, all right, I'm a church volunteer and I want to block out dates. This is really good. I would encourage you to tell your people uh, because this is going to help you so much with your scheduling. But you can tell your people, hey, on Church Connect, if you go to upcoming events, you can actually update your availability. And so your people, anytime, they can say, hey, I'm actually going to be out of town um, around New Year's, so I probably need to let them know at church that I won't be able to serve. So they click Update My Availability, and then I've already got it out of town there for 1022, but I can say Add Unavailable Dates, and then I can skip over to, we'll say, December 31st, or actually it's going to be January 1st, and say Out of Town. Save that date, save the date, <laughs> makes me think save the dates. Um, and now I've got that date saved here. So me as a volunteer, if a worship leader or whoever's scheduling things tries to schedule me for that, um, I, they won't be able to schedule me because it'll show I'm out of town. Uh, so it's just a really, really great tool to kind of, um, I guess, just make the communication very clear between volunteers and the people that are scheduling the volunteers and everything. 
Um, and this is just great because whether you're running a ministry of just a dozen volunteers or you're running a ministry of 250 volunteers, uh, this is a tool that is super scalable. It's going to work for whatever size ministry you have. Um, I've, I've actually worked with a lot of churches that do like really large events a couple times a year, and they love utilizing this just because it makes the planning for that event so much easier. Um, and then they use that in tandem with registrations, and then life is gravy. So uh, that is kind of the side just to quickly show you what it looks like for your people when you're scheduling them and all the stuff. Um, Another thing I do want to make mention of uh, that I didn't even touch on yet is the rehearsal side of things too. Uh, so when you're building out your worship services, so I'm going to go like to my next service that's actually coming up here, our main church service, and you've got my song, uh, all the songs, elements, and everything I've built out. And so I have this rehearsals tab that I can click. And you can actually create rehearsals for your services or your events that you have coming up. Um, and obviously this is more so geared towards like worship planning side of things, but this is just nice because then not only do your people know when you've scheduled them for the particular day they're serving, but they also know, hey, there's a Thursday night rehearsal and we actually have a Sunday morning run through for sound check real fast. And so they have all this information at their disposal. Um, so if you have any rehearsals or sound checks and they need to be there at different times other than the official time you scheduled them for, they're going to see all that too. So that's in the rehearsals uh, side of things. Um, and just fun fact, in the setup side of, so going back where we were before at the beginning and setup, I mentioned that, but just to reinforce, there's a default rehearsal time and default rehearsal in time. So you can put that in there. It saves you a lot of time. Uh, so that is that. Um, and then if you ever need to edit a service, I kind of showed this a minute ago, um, but you just select a service and you just select this edit button. And if you need to like change the calendar it's on or maybe you need to change a location or something, if it's like a specific event and you need to move a location, um, or if you just need to delete it outright because, I don't know, you just need to delete it because you want to restart, you can do that. So that's how you do that. All right. We've covered a whole lot so far. Everybody staying with me so far? <laughs> Learning all the things? Um, Lee Valley Baptist, yes, yeah, some of us appreciate when you nerd out. Oh, it, one of these days, I'm just gonna do like a very intensive workshop where I'm gonna dive into like the deep in intricacies of the software and like the really crazy stuff you can do. I'm talking like automations and wild things that probably only a handful of churches even know about. I'm going to go into those one day, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so let's talk about um, side by side. I've actually dedicated time for this. <laughs> Sign me up. All right, I'm holding to, to it. Side by side is a feature that enables you to uh, really just look at things from a bird's eye view. It is what it says it is. You know, we live in a world where things say what they are, but they're not actually what they are. Um, side by side is seeing your services side by side. So whenever you have a service selected, I'm just gonna go to a main church service here. At the bottom of my outline, we have this button that says side by side. Jane, this seems so much easier in Planning Center. Um, it was well, just a different approach, Jane. Um, a lot of people ask us like our approach and everything of like doing worship and scheduling all that. Really at the end of the day, this is geared towards a ministry leader who just wants to quickly and easily schedule their volunteers um, and the volunteers know exactly when they're scheduled, what they're scheduled for, if there's songs they need to know, it's right there for them. Um, and so it just comes down to it, it, the tool needed for what you're trying to accomplish. And we find that with most ministries, this is a very great tool for what it is they're trying to accomplish, um, whether it's a small church plant or a mega church. Uh, so side by side, let's go to that. So whenever I click that side by side button, what this does is it brings up that service that I was originally on when I clicked that button. But here is the really cool part. I know I'm getting like super pumped about this, um, so don't make fun of me too much, but um, you can start loading additional services. Uh, and I'm gonna ask this question, chat. So how far out are you planning um, your services or your events in general whenever you're trying to schedule people or plan things out? Are you planning a couple weeks out? Are you planning a couple months out? Let me know in the chat how far you're planning out. So I'm going to start loading up services, and I can actually load th up to three additional services here. So I'm actually going to pull. So I have 10-2 pulled up. So I'm going to go to 10-9, 10-16, and 10-23 and load those. 
So now I have four services loaded up side by side. Uh, now I have um, all the songs for this service, but you notice I don't have my songs yet um, for the service happening the following week. And the reason why is just because as a worship leader, I don't really plan out the songs that far out because I like to kind of work with the pastor and know what songs are going to best work with the sermon. Um, but I do schedule my people at least a month out. And so if you look here, I've got all my people. So not only is side by side great for seeing all the things happening in your service, but it's also great for seeing all your volunteers. And again, this isn't just for your team as a worship leader, maybe. This is all teams. So if you're scheduling everybody, whether it's children's ministry, hospitality, welcome team, ushers, whatever you can think of, I can view all those people here on this massive grid kind of layout um, to be able to see that. And now here's where it gets really interesting. So as you start planning things out, you may want to say, hey, I actually want to copy something from one service over to another. Um, and so House of the Lord, that's a song that we're really trying to instill in our people. And I want to do that again the following week. So I'm already kind of trying to plan out 10-9 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this copy between services toggle here. And then I'm just going to move this over here. And now I just move that. So I have that song moved over. Um, or let's say you're in a situation um, in which you want to move um, maybe one thing from one service to another. Um, I can say, you know what, I want to move this scripture to here, even though I've already got scripture over there. Um, and then I can move this one over here. Whoops, I forgot to toggle. So move between services. So that way I can move it completely out of the service, not just a copy here. So there, I just moved it completely from one thing to the other, and I already know what you're thinking. So if you can do that with like songs and service elements, you can do that with people, right? Oh yeah. So I can go to people. This is a, if you're a person that is like, oh, scheduling is a challenge sometimes with people, because you'll have like, you know, someone in the children's ministry is like, oh, I can't make it this week, but I can make it next week. I actually talked to Janice, and Janice said that she'll switch with me, blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, you can actually leverage this to move your people around. And so let's say, all right, how about, I'll use an example of, of Martha. So Martha, she actually reached out to me and she said, hey Wes, I can't serve that next week for the lights, um, but I talked to Alan, Alan said that he'll, he'll take that week and I can go ahead and just serve this week if that's cool with you. All right, that sounds great, Martha. I'll go ahead and do that real quick on my end since I'm on my computer. So then I just move Martha over, then I move, or I move Martha and then I move Alan over and there we go. And then I just can go ahead and say, you know what? I already talked to her on the phone. She's accepted. Boom. There we go. And so you can quickly move people around, but then all of a sudden the software can say, hey, there's an issue. And then I can look at it and go, oh, wait a minute. Alan's already serving an audio and I can see that that's a boo-boo. I need to find either someone to replace Alan for audio that week, or I need to find someone to replace Martha. And so this platform really makes it super easy to see who's scheduled, who's not, who I can move around if needed. Um, and then here's the other thing. So if that all that stuff wasn't already cool, what you can also do is actually create services from side by side. And so let's say, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and X out. I'll just X out of these services real quick and just leave the original. I can go ahead and create a service and I can create it from a template if I wanted to. And so we'll just say, no, not the retired one. We'll use the, the current one I'm using. Use the roles, pick the location. And we're just going to call this, again, we'll just call this main church service. And there we go. I created it. I'll use the roles, use the songs. And then I click create service. And there we go. So now I have this church service. And disregard the dates. I'm just kind of throwing stuff in there randomly real fast so you can see. But then I can actually start like just copying things over from one service to another if I needed to. Um, so it really just makes your life a lot easier. I, I see a lot of churches and a lot of ministries that are scheduling people and creating all their events, planning their worship. And what they do is in, they end up using side-by-side -side exclusively just because when they start realizing the power of being able to copy things between services, move things between services, or better yet, being able to select multiple things. Like th this is kind of wild. So then like saying, okay, and then I want to move all of these things from here to here. You can do that. So I'll move them back though. I don't want to mess everything up. But just to show you, like, I mean, side by side really enables you to quickly and efficiently move people and songs and service elements back and forth between things and copy things over. Um, so 
that that is like the I actually had an entire webinar dedicated to side by side going into the nitty gritty of how to use it. Uh, but at least this gives you kind of an idea of what it's uh, capable of doing for your ministry. Uh, and I, I think that as you start using side by side, you're probably going to start using it kind of primarily for a lot of your worship planning and scheduling, especially if you're maybe wanting to plan out your songs like three or four weeks out or something. And you, you quickly see like, oh, this particular song, this person actually, that's not a, a good song for them. Um, I want to do this song for that person instead. You all know how it is as a worship leader or as someone who's scheduling volunteers. There's so many nuances that come into play. Um, and that's one thing we've been asked, like, are you going to build some sort of like scheduling feature that automatically schedules people? Maybe in the future we, we've thought about it. Um, but what we find, especially in ministry uh, and when we're talking about scheduling individuals for things like worship services and stuff, there's just so many variables that come into play and like how this person can only serve if their wife is not serving in this um, department or this person can only play if they're playing with this other electric guitarist because this person's not as strong of an electric guitars or whatever. This vocalist, I really need a stronger vocalist to be with that vocalist because they just need that confidence. And so that's why we've really tried to make this super streamlined and easy to move things around and stuff. So that way you're not having to spend all this time just like feel like you're using some sort of clunky Word document moving things around. I mean, this is built to be very fluid. Okay, so I have covered a lot. I've covered all the things right at 50 minutes. That's exactly where I wanted to be, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so what I want to do is this. I want to move into a time of Q&A. And here's the fun thing. I have no place to be. Uh, remember that song, There's No Place I'd Rather Be? Um, so there's no place I'd rather be right now but to be helping you all. Um, so if you have any questions, whether it's about side-by-side, -side, scheduling, I'm, I'm limiting this to worship and scheduling screen. So if you start going off on tangents in other areas, I got to reel you back in. Um, but yeah, any questions on this stuff, let's get them addressed for you here live on air. If you're watching this at a later time, unfortunately, you can't ask questions live on air because this is pre-recorded, but just reach out to our support team. That's how you get help. Um, so go ahead, start asking me the questions, and I already see a couple here that I can start addressing. But first, coffee. Hold on. Mmm, that is good coffee. All right. We have a local coffee place that's, uh, that's near us that uh, actually roasts the coffee, and every time I drink it, I'm just like, yes, that's so good. All right, so Alan, um, how, how do I get this? Oh, you found, okay, never mind. Jennifer, do the reminders work if we don't have Church Connect set up? So that's a really good question, Jennifer. So here's the deal. The reminders that are sent via email or text message or both, um, those are gonna work regardless if you've taken the time to even set up anything in Church Connect. And just remember, even if you like, haven't set up your Church Connect page and with all the things and your different cards and stuff, the actual scheduling side of things and stuff is still gonna be available to your people. They're still gonna see all of that. It's not gonna change any of that. So whether or not you've taken the time to actually add cards into Church Connect does not affect anything that has to do with scheduling and stuff. So really good question. I'm glad you asked that. Um, so Jane, Jane is asking, can we set up templates of team leaders that want to serve only the first and third, etc. So what I would recommend in that situation, Jane, is I would go ahead and I would just create a couple different templates. I would have a template that you do for the first um, and the third, and then I would have a template of all the people that are on the second and the fourth and possibly the fifth for those random months. And that's actually really common. I, I see a lot of churches do that where they'll have a couple templates for their different teams and go off of that um, and be able to uh, easily just have their different teams. That's a, probably one of the most common things I see actually, Jane. Uh, so that's how I would do that. Um, and, and the cool thing about that, Jane, is when you have these templates with all the people and stuff, I mean, it is literally a matter. You take that template and just add it, add it again. Um, or copy over and, and side by side. I've seen a lot of churches, they just select all the things in side by side and copy it over to the other week and they're done. So it's super quick. Um, it's a good question. All right, Harry, where, where can I replay this lesson? Uh, well, you can't replay it right now but, because it's still live, but on YouTube, just check out the YouTube channel. Uh, we post all of these things usually uh, a day or two later and you can check that out. Um, and I encourage you, our, our YouTube channel is filled with so many great things that go way beyond just the worship and scheduling. This is just one little 
itsy bitsy teeny part of church track and our all-in-one church software that does everything from obviously worship planning and volunteer scheduling but it has online giving uh registrations for your events people can actually register for events and all that stuff accounting and so much more all right um I'm not seeing where to delete a team. Um, so that's a really good question. So here's, I, I kind of said this earlier, but it, it was kind of in passing. So let me make this really clear to everybody. So when you're creating a team within the worship and scheduling screen, what this is doing is it's actually creating a tag. And then when you create a role within that team, that creates a sub tag. And just to show what that looks like. So if I go to my people screen on church track, and I go to my tags on the people screen. There's my worship team right there that I actually created this in the worship side of things. And it started, it created this tag and then it created all these sub tags over there. Um, check it out. I have a saxophone player. Isn't that awesome? Um, so that's where it creates it all. And so your question in, how do you delete it? Like, let's say you delete it, you create a team, you create a role and you're like, actually, I don't need that team. I don't need that role. Well, you need to hop over to the people screen and delete that tag and sub tag. Um, that would actually be a little bit handier to have that built in um, to the teams and roles. Maybe that's something you can um, recommend to our uh, developers. Create a support ticket and put that as a feature request um, if that's something you're wanting. Um, we do find that a lot of people don't delete things very often just because once you kind of get going in the swing of things, it's already done. But yeah, it's easy to delete off the uh, people screen there. All right. And I, I'm seeing <laughs> you found it good. I'm glad you found that. Please keep bringing me your questions. I have nowhere to go um, except the team next door may, after maybe an hour, they might say, hey, you need to stop. Uh, <laughs> they're messing with me. No, I'm prepared to stay as long as it takes. I love this kind of stuff. Uh, so, all right, Lee Valley, you're asking, I know you can print service outlines, but it would be awesome to customize it, like being able to print multiple copies per page, remove the timing column, or even the ability to download it as a CSV and customize it from there. That's a really good idea as far as the customizing CSV. Um, Give us a feature request. I'm, obviously, I can't make promises, but let our uh, developers know that's something you want to do. And just to kind of hit on that, like when you're creating these, so I got my service outline. I'll just go to my most recent one. And just to generate that, I can just click print outline. And that's at the bottom right of that outline. I click that. And then it goes ahead and it brings up the uh, printing preview here for me to be able to print that out. And this one doesn't even show like all the things going on because I just had a very basic one there. Um, so if I had another service, actually, here, this one's a better one to show because it actually has lead by and stuff. So I'll print that. And so there you can go. You can see the, the time and all that. Um, here's something that kind of worth noting, too. Like if you don't want the time at all, if you're not really as concerned about keeping track of the time and stuff, just don't put that in the column. If you're not as concerned about putting who it's led by and stuff like that, just don't put that in the column and it'll be fine and it won't print out there. So, uh, but yeah, leave us, a, leave us a feature request and we'll take a look at it. All right. Uh, any other questions um, about worship and scheduling? Is, is there anything specific you're trying to accomplish with this and, and you're looking at it and maybe you're trying to figure out, hey, how do I best do this for this scenario? Um, bring me your toughest question. I dare you. Uh, I, I love the challenge. Um, I, I'm always, they, they, they give me a hard time here because like, I'm, I'm, my mind is so wrapped up around like all the things when it comes to like worship planning and uh, just earlier, I was talking to one of our uh, developers about MIDI controls, and uh, I'm thinking about building my own MIDI controller, and he's just like, man, you're crazy. And I was like, I know I am. I don't even know how to code, but I'm going to try to learn. Um, but yeah, there's, there's so many fun things in this realm. Uh, by the way, my email is weston at churchtrack.com. I just do want to throw that out there. Um, obviously, if you need like support ASAP, please reach out to our support team, go through our support channel because that's how you're actually going to get help fast. Uh, but if you're just like randomly wanting to reach out, like, hey, Wes, you know, what do you think of using Church Track for this? Or, hey, what are some cool worship songs that you've been seeing a lot of churches do lately? Or whatever it may be, let me know. Uh, I'm always um, down to learn new songs. Or um, if anybody out there knows any, a thing or two about building MIDI controllers, uh, specifically for guitar foot switches, let me know because I'm learning and I want to make one, so. That goes to show how deep we get into some of this stuff here. But at the end of the day, we're, we're just here to help you build your church, uh, build the body of Christ. Uh, we're so excited to be working with you all. 
Um, all right, Jane, using song select to upload a song, can you transpose the key in church track without needing to re-upload from song select in another key? Jane, I'm so glad you brought this up. Um, so song select actually just came out with their new API, um, API 2.0. Um, and apparently that API has a lot of really nifty features that we're going to be able to utilize as our developers start adding it. We're in the process of uh, getting ready to tool the software for that API. And there's going to be some neat features in there. And that is going to be one of them, from my understandings, that you'll be able to do. And the current state of Song Select's API that we have with ChurchTrack, it doesn't allow to do that. Um, but it may be able to allow us to do that with their new API that's going to give a lot more features. One of those features in particular I do want to mention for everybody here is the ability to have automatic song reporting. So you don't have to click that report button, generate the report, and give it to Song Select. The software will be able to actually just automatically report as you go directly to CCLI. That's what I've been told by CCLI from the people over there. Um, so really neat stuff. Um, we, we're so excited to constantly add new things and uh, be able to bring the software to the next level and do some cool things with that. So. Uh, stay tuned. We'll, we'll put out a big, big thing about that pretty soon. Speaking of like things coming out, stay tuned because there's some other neat things that I can't, I'm not allowed to say. They told me, Weston, don't say it in the, the, the workshop today in the live stream, but um, just be checking your emails. Uh, all right. When you're scheduling teams for service, um, is there a secret, <laughs> like I say, is there a secret to add more than one team? So let me go back. So when you're scheduling teams for a service, is there a secret to add more than one team? I have greeters, but I'm not seeing an option to add team and its people. So this is a situation, let, let's, let's work with on one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm trying to see what you're trying to accomplish here, just because my rebuttal is always in a lot of these types of situations gonna be to leverage the templates because those templates already have all the teams and everything built out. Um, or to leverage side by side just because of a side by side, um, like I showed earlier, like just to give you a quick example of just really how crazy fast it is. So like I go to side by side on a service here and I'm just going to, I'm going to create a service from complete scratch. I'll call this a scratch service just for fun. And I'll pick some random date. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick there and then I'm going to just say it's blank, blah, blah, blah. Create service. Okay, so I have nothing in the service. This is why I stress side-by-side -side so much, especially for scheduling volunteers and stuff, because uh, from here, I can just go ahead, I can click to select, and then I can select a lot of different people from a lot of different teams. Um, so I've, I've actually seen churches do that. So you can pull one team at a time when you're doing this, um, and then I can just go ahead and move them over. And so like in this case, I'm gonna copy from one to the other. I just copied those. Then I select all these and then I can copy those over too. And, and it's funny, like I've seen a lot of churches, they'll create a template, but then they'll just start using side-by-side -side for this specific reason I'm showing, uh, just because it's so dang fast how you can move people over from one service to another in multiple teams, no matter what team it is. Uh, so that's um, what I would say, but yeah, let's create a support ticket or reach out via email to me and let me know kind of more in depth what it is you're trying to accomplish and we kind of look at that together. Um, all right, well, I don't think we have any more questions. I, I would say speak now or forever hold your peace, but uh, you can literally create a support ticket and our team will get back with you usually in about 30 minutes if you catch us during our normal business hours. Um, and if you don't catch us in our normal business hours, it's okay because we'll see it right the next morning and answer your question for you. Uh, but uh, you all, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, this, this is one of my favorite features of the software just because I'm a worship leader. Uh, and when I'm not here at Church Track doing all the things with uh, all the accounting and worship and stuff, I'm usually playing my guitar at home, hanging out with the family. Uh, so this is fun to be able to really be super in my element and talking to other people who are scheduling and planning worship and all the things. Uh, and again, it's just Weston at churchtrack.com. If you have something super specific you want to talk about worship with me on um, or any any. Advice. I'm always up for advice as a worship leader just to get better. Uh, so y'all have a great rest of your week. Um, stay tuned. We will be putting out um, emails very soon about some cool stuff coming around the bend because we never stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. We're always making things here at Church Track uh, to help you build the body of Christ. So we'll talk to you soon. See ya.